you know, it's very hard for a generic open world sandbox to stand out among the many other open worlds. And I too was guilty of overlooking this game. I remember that this game came out around the same time as Prototype, which was a direct competitor to this game. And in this competition, I was on Prototype's side. The fact is that at the time, I was around a group of friends which could be defined as your typical Call of Duty crowd. That is to say, we were dumb and easily impressed by violence. And I was one of those dumb kids. And you will find me preaching about the hooded Chad. No, not that hooded Chad. The one in a black leather jacket which could jump over buildings and explode in a tentacle mess, rather than the bold simp which climbed buildings ledge by ledge. So I was a prototype guy. I remember I bought it when I was first visiting the UK, since there the game costed about 30 euros less than where I'm from. Thanks Italy, good country in my ass. So I played and enjoyed Prototype and I swore by it. And one day, while looking for content about the game, I stumbled upon the inevitable comparisons with Infamous, with a lot of people praising Infamous talking about its story, which is fair given that the story of Prototype is as forgettable as a dream when you wake up, but also they were praising the gameplay. And to that I said, impossible. I mean, I just jumped across three blocks and ran up the Empire State Building. It doesn't get better than that, right? And to answer my doubts came, incredibly, the PlayStation Store. Yeah, because at the time, it provided actual demos for games. Not like now with all this paid trial nonsense. So I stumbled across the demo for this game and I played it since it was free and I loved it. I don't know how to explain it, but this game got me. I really liked the more grounded feel of the game and the aesthetic. So much that I went out, bought the first messenger backpack that I could find, and ran off to climb trees, window grates. I was an impressionable kid, alright? And this game made me fulfill my superhero fantasies better than prototype. All these stories to explain that Infamous has a dear place in my heart, but that does not mean that the game is without its flaws. First of all, I don't know if you noticed, but, well, just look at the game. It looks like shit. The whole city is made of different tonalities of grey and brown, but I think that this can be excused given that the style nails the tone of a dying city, torn apart by crime and a pandemic, which hits frighteningly close to home, but also the animations are janky and the frame rate cannot keep its pants up, and it suffers especially when facing trash mobs on the second island, which are made of many components that ultimately put a strain on the PS3 performance. But what ties together the gameplay experience are the particles of the lightning jumping all over the place and bouncing off enemies and the environment. It's like you're lighting up a Christmas tree for every enemy you kill. The plot, in its own way, is easy to get into, with more twists and turns added as you go. For me, it managed to stay engaging most of the way. The characters are not many but are written pretty well, with Zeke standing above everyone else. He's very human and his relationship with Cole is engaging, watching him as he supports him while also remaining jealous and trying to overcompensate is very entertaining. I mean the guy fucks up many times in the story and as annoying as it may be, you can understand where he's coming from. What would you do if your best friend got superpowers? The character with the least amount of depth is sadly Cole, and that's because the writers had to make him in line with both the good and the bad karma versions, thus reducing the amount of personality that he could have had. And in my opinion, the main problem with the infamous series is exactly the karma system. It's not nuanced enough with different consequences for different actions. You are not getting different endings like Mass Effect or The Witcher, where different outcomes can exist together. No, you're either blue or you're red, which the only thing it does is add another playthrough to the story in order to experience all content, or at least if you don't want to watch it on YouTube. I think the karma system should have been explored during questlines which, at the end of, you get a different version of your power based on the choice you've made. 
so you could have the bad, more distracting version of some powers along with a good, more precise version of others. In this way, you could have your moral dilemma on becoming stronger at the cost of your humanity. Unlike the game does which, if you decide to make a, let's say, explosive bad choice towards the end of the game, you stand to gain nothing, only bad karma which, if you're bad, you were gonna do anyway, or if you're good, is completely useless to you, since you bought the good karma upgrade which you cannot use if you turn bad. Although credit to the developers, in this particular choice they give you a couple of extra power nodes. Still useless but hey, it's something. So all in all, should you play this game? Well, definitely. It's a game from 2009 which does the open world sandbox formula way better than many other titles nowadays. It's good fun, it's engaging, and if you, for whatever reason, did not play it, you definitely should. Easy, 9 out of 10 for me. Now, go out, grab your messenger backpack and climb some trees.